Hey guys, and welcome back to another video with your two favorite book nerds, Amy and Kelly. And we are here today to do a, another episode of Blind Date with a yes. Book. It was kind of a spur of the moment blind date because in our, was it the monthly or the mid-year mm. wrap up? Yeah, one of them. One of them that one we were them. filming. I know that you were going on and on about this mm -hmm. this book that you gave me and yes. um, it kind of just went from right there. Just like, you would really love this book. You know what? We should do a blind we date just, with Let's just, just do a blind date. date. You need to read yeah. this book. You need to read this book. <laughs> it, was, it was perfect. It worked out great. Yeah. And um, spoiler alert, I'm definitely not mad about it. So. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah. So, um, the book that Kelly picked out for me, I left the dust jacket at home, so sorry. But there's still a really cool little um, little design it is. on the on the hardcover here. Yeah. So, uh, Nettle and Bone by T. King Fisher, um, who actually had my most recent five star read what, with What Moves the Dead. So right. I was very excited to have this be my blind date. Definitely going in what I thought looked like a ten. <laughs> definitely excited for it. So Yay! I'll talk more about that later. Good. But. Okay, so the book that Amy picked for me is Dial A for Aunties by Jesse Sutanto. Sutanto? I hope I said that right. I so, yeah. So, also not mad about this. Oh! So, it actually was on my TBR too because I thought it sounded cute. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. Yeah. Also <laughs> All right, so let's talk about how these dates went. Let's talk. Do, do you want to go first or want me to go first? You go first. Go first. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. I'm starting out. Okay. <laughs> um, so, Metal and Bone, I, it wasn't a five star. It was not the same level as What Moves the Dead. Sorry, there Didn't wasn't quite as much horror Yes, to it, yes, so, and yeah. that's why. Like me and fantasy books, we kind of have a love-hate relationship. Yeah, there rarely ever is a five star fantasy read for me. Uh, this one is four stars. So it was still close, it was still yeah. really good. I still really enjoyed it. There were definitely parts in there where I was like laughing out loud. There were parts where I was just like, man, I relate to what she's saying right now. Mm -hmm. um, parts where I was like, oh my heart. Like it was a roller coaster ride of emotions yeah. and I really, really enjoyed my Yay. time with this book. Yay! Yay. Yes. Yeah, and I so much appreciated those like short. <laughs> You know those girls, I like big books and I cannot lie, that is not me, okay? <laughs> I do not like big books, unless they are just like, like it's, I don't know, it's rare for me to just want to sit down and read a big book, mm -hmm. it's just so intimidating. I'm intimidated easy when it comes to reading, <laughs> and so I really enjoy the shorter books, and T. King Fisher's writing is also phenomenal. I haven't, yeah. I mean, I've only read two of her books, but like, mm -hmm. I haven't found one that was difficult to read. Like, even if I didn't like the story, I feel like I would still enjoy the book because the writing is just, just her, so good. Her writing is, yeah. Yeah. So, so good. Yeah. It was, it just really added to the whole experience and made it even more magical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, definitely yes. loved it a lot. Um, I'm trying to think if there are any like, Highlight points. Are we gonna do say, spoilers? Do we do one of the spoilers? I don't know if we're gonna do spoilers or not. I don't know. We need, what do you think? Did we do spoilers in our last blind date? Yes, we yes. did. Uh huh. Okay, well then we might. Because I had to rant. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, we don't have to. If we don't, it'll be short. That's the people would probably <laughs> like that. <laughs> probably be a good thing. Probably. Well, I guess we could just kind of talk like what the book is about like generally because mm -hmm. I haven't yeah. done that yet I just have been gushing about gushing. how much I like it and I didn't even tell you what yes. it's about so yes, yes. Nettle and Bone is about this um, these two royal families so we have one royal family of kind of like a smaller kingdom where it's king and a queen and they have three daughters and they end up marrying off their first oldest daughter to another prince in a different kingdom to kind of try and help keep their kingdom from being attacked and also to like um, help that kingdom out with like controlling the harbor and all that. Like it was a win-win situation for both parties, or so they thought. Sort of. Sort of, yeah. 
So after um, the marriage and all that, not too long after that, uh, the eldest daughter that got married off ends up dead. And they say it was an accident and everyone mourns for her. And then the second daughter in line gets married off to this same prince. And everything seems to be going good and fine. However, the youngest, the third daughter, she starts to become a little bit suspicious about what actually had happened to her sister that died and whether or not her sister that's with the prince is safe because something seems a little bit off to her. Now the third daughter had been shipped off to a convent to mm -hmm. go and live with some nuns so she wasn't actually a nun, almost a nun is her mm -hmm. kind of her thing throughout the whole book. Um, her name's Princess Mara or just Mara and um, she ends up going to the kingdom to visit her sister and the prince because her sister was having a baby at the time. This was the first time that she was having a yeah. baby. And that was when her sister told her that she didn't feel safe, something was kind of up. And so on. after that, that sparked Mara to kind of try and figure out a way to try and save her sister and get her away from the prince and kill the prince. Yeah. Put an end to the torture because that seemed to be the only way that she could actually save her sister's life. So she goes and on not endanger their right. kingdom because they were so small. That right. If they just went and took her sister, then he'd retaliate. Right. So that was yeah. the only way she could. So in order to save everybody, that was yeah. the only way that she thought would would work. And so she ends up going on this whole like quest, I guess, and she makes a whole bunch of new friends, including Bone Dog, and just like oh my the Bone Dog. The Bone Dog was the best. Well, she had the the. Dustwife, which is a witch that they control the dead, mm -hmm. um, so they kind of like live and care, take care of cemeteries. But she, the Dustwife, she went to ask help for. And she had to do three impossible tasks: weave a nettle, weave a cloak out of nettles, mm -hmm. um, create a dog out of bone, and catch moonlight in a jar. Those really didn't end up being a big part of the story but still yeah. she made she did it she, she did made it. the dog oh the dog came alive yeah, and oh so, i love the dog he was so cute like so but, sweet yes was like oh i loved him so much and then they went into this other like little magical place and they found what was the name fenris is that yes. his name in the goblin market in the goblin market and there's like a little love story happening there a little yeah, romance sprinkled little in you know just a sprinkle a which bit. i appreciate yeah i definitely oh was. and you know what i forgot to mention in the wrap up the demon chicken oh my the god demon, the, the death demon wife. oh the demon chicken was oh. definitely like a top character for me oh my god tier. it was hilarious yeah the dust wife had a chicken that was possessed by a demon and everybody thought that she was just saying that this was like an ill-tempered chicken yeah but no it had <laughs> real demon in it until further i was like you mean she's really possessed <laughs> what you think i was saying oh it's it's funny it's this so chicken good. is funny it's so good and then there's another chick that comes later a yeah. little finder and it's like yes little thing. I'm like, oh my gosh. and that okay this is like not really a spoiler but i just don't have to talk about it so like when they go to the market to find the chick and agnes her mara's godmother yeah. great great yeah aunt, there's god godmothers in this and the twist on godmothers is so good yeah, it's so good too. But anyway, they're, so they're like in the market and they're trying to find a chick that's going to work. And Agnes is going through and picking up each one and like whispering to it. And the, the chicken seller is like looking at her like, what are you doing, you crazy lady? And then he sees like all the rest of them in the group and he's just kind of like looking at him like, what is happening here? And um, Fenris is like, oh, like she's just, she does this all the time. She just talks to the chick. <laughs> like, it's fine. Just chickens. let her do her thing. And I'm like, why does this man think that's weird? Because, like, I would totally go into, like, Orsham's or whatever when they have their little chicks in the thing. Oh, and yeah. I sit there and talk to the chickens. <laughs> they don't let you pick them up anymore, but no, they when they did, I would pick them up all the time. Yeah. It's yeah. like, this is, I don't understand why this chicken seller thinks that this is weird. weird. Like, this is normal. <laughs> I mean, they're so cute and fluffy. How could you not? But you know, talking one? about the sellers when, when they went to the goblin market and to get Fenris mm -hmm. and what Mara had to do to get. Fen oh my gosh, it was so good. I'm not gonna say what it is, but it was just the level of whimsy and quirk in this story 
It's so good. It's just so yeah. good. It was really good. And she good. does it so well that it doesn't seem stupid or yeah overdone. It just oh right because there are so like good. a lot of fantasy stories that I read that are just like this is just dumb. Like I know this is supposed to be all made up and whatever, yeah. and then I'm just like I can't get into. And I just I don't know. There was just something about this that made it seem like a real world yeah like you know like one you can well really something. she writes characters so well mm -hmm. that i mean like mara she is not a gung-ho hero type person oh no she's very content where she's at she has to really be pushed into this quest mm -hmm. and all along on this quest she has no clue what she's doing Mm -hmm. no and it's clue. very like obvious like there's no yeah. like skating around it like no. she comes right out and says I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> yeah and she's you know yeah. it's she's incompetent and as yeah. far as like this sort of thing goes but but she's very intelligent and mm -hmm. she figures things out and she you know can come up with things but it's like they're just so relatable because yeah. well her, it's like her social anxiety and everything yeah. really it's just like she's so scared to interact with other people and all of that that even though she's super smart like people think she's simple because she's just yeah. over there just like freaking out internally yeah. and so people think she's just a little slow and I don't I just was like so relatable because there's a part in there too where she was like they went to the northern kingdom or whatever and they were trying to put their plan together and find out where to stay or whatever and she's just like Fenris is out there like talking to all the people and like trying to find oh where the chicken seller is. Yeah. And yeah. like he's just going out and just being like asking random people on the street and she's like, This would have taken so much longer if I had to do it because <laughs> I would have gone to one person and I would have freaked out and we just would have turned around like and that would and, be like, it. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, this is so relatable. Like well, that's me. Like I, I wouldn't do it. I think she talks about too, if if it hadn't been for the others, she would have turned around and left and yeah. gone home. Yeah, you know, she's like, just same. Yeah, same. I think that's why they're so real because mm -hmm. it's not. Yeah, you know they don't. And Agnes, I loved Agnes. Oh, oh she my was gosh. so cute, so sweet. She was. Yeah, was really I really good. liked the whole like. Um, it was kind of like a Grace and Frankie relationship between her and the dust wife. And the dust wife, yeah. Yeah, I really liked that yeah. a lot. Like two completely different personalities, but they ended up like becoming friends well, in yeah. a way. And it was like Agnes was so flighty mm -hmm. but yet her power is <laughs> so scary. Yeah. <laughs> it's like this, <laughs> what is it? A lot of evil in a small little package. Yeah, <laughs> yeah her power's kinda scary. Yeah. So I yeah. really like that. And there was a part I'm gonna have to try and see if I can find I don't know. So like when she was at the one of the bursts, Mara was helping with one of the bursts and mm. they um, I think she was helping Sister Apothecary with one of them. And the baby came out and the sister just handed it to her without cleaning it off or oh, whatever. Yeah. And she literally, what did, I don't even remember, I, I did it in my little uh, update or whatever. Because I read it and I'm just like, this is exactly how I feel. Because <laughs> she was some, oh my gosh. Okay, so this part. So Sister Apothecary just handed Mara a baby and I literally related to this part so much. It's in, this is exactly how I would react. So it says, uh, the sister handed the child to Mara who stared at it with intense horror. It was bloody and wrinkly and reddish gray <laughs> and looked like the sort of thing you would drive back to hell with holy water. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like if they're ever as strong if I ever have a child do not be handing it to me if it has not been cleaned off I don't want it <laughs> okay I don't want it <laughs> but later on though when she's like uh, the mother saying it's alive it cried it's alive right and she said oh yes very alive she stared at it trying to find something else to say has arms and legs and uh, a, a head, head. <laughs> babies just look like little potatoes like alien <laughs> potatoes at that point so it's like what else are you gonna like oh, oh it's so cute gosh. Gosh. some of them are so, some some of them are some most of them look like little aliens i had a cousin that when he was born he looked like et like literally he had a little bunch of little wrinkles on his face so you could just see <laughs> like raising his neck so much. he grew into himself though he's cute 
Anyway, it's just like that. Marsh is so awkward. Yeah. And I loved it. <laughs> I did too. I'm like, I get this, girl. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I, I had a lot of fun with it. I enjoyed it for sure. So, definitely a very successful date. We'll continue to go on dates with T. King Fisher books for sure. Yeah. Yeah. She's an auto buy for me now because. Yeah, I gotta get yeah, the definitely. second book in What Moves the Dead duology. I have already got it pre ordered. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you do. <laughs> yes, I do. So, yeah. Anyway, nope. <laughs> yeah, I already have that one pre ordered, so we're gonna keep going on that. Just like every everything, she's got another one that's a little more horror lean ish called The Hollows, I think it's called. It's supposed to be more of a horror more horror than fantasy okay. so anyway go. yeah she's great she's just great if you and eclectic so if you don't really like horror then try one of her other books like um a wizard's guide for defensive baking is more of a children's book or like a middle grade chat book this one's you know much more fantasy there's a little bit of scary stuff but it's not some things yeah, are dark mm -hmm. but it's not horror yeah. um but what moves the dead that was horror is horror <laughs> oh speaking of you know i always said what moves the dead those damn rabbits mm -hmm. hairs and we looked at the the um inside uh-huh you know we showed that when we read the book but this one has the same thing yeah. Illustration. It's, it's so, so cute. cute. It's so pretty. <laughs> the bone dog. Yeah, a little bone dog. Oh. Anyway, yeah. She just is really good and it's it's more of a kind of that fairy tale type telling. I just I really really like it. Mm -hmm. Like how she writes very much. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. 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 Success. All right, tell me about your date. Okay, so dial A for aunties. I also gave this a four star. I'll take it. Yes. So, um, dial A for aunties. The main character is uh, Medi. Wow. I just really literally just finished this book like two days ago. Um, Medi, her real name's Medellin, and there's just kind of a funny thing about in their in their culture especially like um immigrants as they're learning english um tend to misspell things and so especially names so instead of madeline she's Medellin. so they call her medi um so anyway medi and her her mother and three aunts run a <clears throat> like wedding business they're not planners but like one aunt's a baker um her mom does flowers one aunt, the other aunt does my hair and makeup, and then there's another aunt that's a wedding singer. And then Medi's the photographer. So, um, basically the, the story is, is that Medi goes on a blind date and due to events, she ends up accidentally killing her date. And so, it was a, they, were, they were in a car accident, sort of. <laughs> um, and it was very deserted area and Medi was afraid to stay there um, because she was afraid well nobody would come and she thinks she's there with a dead body um, so she's thinking nobody will come so um, she decides and her phone is dead so she can't call for help so she decides that she's gonna have to drive to uh, some place that she can call and so she 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 puts the body in the trunk because it's she can't have it in the car with her now, Medi thinks this is her fault, which it kind of, kind of sort of is. It's an accident, but she kind of caused the accident. Mm -hmm. um, so she's feeling guilty. So she can't really, plus it's squeaky, you're squeaky because it's a dead body. And so she puts him in the trunk. So when she drives off, she passes the gas station and she can't, she, she doesn't stop. <laughs> she's going to stop and call the police from the gas station and she doesn't because she's feeling guilty. She's feeling again scared um, and now she's put the body in the trunk and she's afraid of what they're gonna think with that and and so she just ends up in her panic driving home and gets her family involved and they're gonna just they're gonna uh, dispose of this body 
So they have a wedding the next day, a very exclusive wedding on this island resort. It's a big deal for their business. And supposedly, Medi's date was an owner or co-owner of this resort. And so they were afraid, again, if they went to the police, then they'd lose this job that meant so much for their business. And anyway, so this starts off this whole like chaotic journey about them trying to dispose of the body and still do their jobs at the wedding. And then you throw in a side of um, a heist <laughs> side plot in there and come to find out who the, the, the dead body, the dead guy really is, He's not an owner. Um, <laughs> and it's just, I mean, it's not a long book, but it's I mean, really it's not up. short either. It's like 300 pages, but there is literally no time to breathe in this book. It is one thing after another, after another. And so I really commend Jesse Sutanto for, I mean, knowing how to just coming up with these different scenarios that keep getting Medi and her family deeper and deeper into trouble. And what's, I mean, it was so good. And it was, it's completely unrealistic, yeah. but it's a rom-com but Weekend at Bernie's mashup. <laughs> so of course it's not gonna be realistic. Um, so anyway, in the middle of all of this, Betty did not really want to go on this date because she is still pining for her college love, Nathan. And they, they were, you know, had dated for almost four years in college and then ended up, she broke it off. And anyway. Well, because of the, the curse. Well, yes, yeah, supposedly Medi had been told there was a curse that made all the men in their family either leave or die. And so far it had borne out because mm -hmm. she had older relatives that had died. Each one of her aunts, husbands, and her father had all left and all her male cousins were gone as well. She was the only daughter born to these four sisters. Mm -hmm. So she was like, I'm cursed, <laughs> you know, this is the way it happened. Um, anyway, they broke up. She went home to uh, to start business with her aunts. Anyway, turns out the real owner of the resort is Nathan. My so, own. like true rom com situation. I love that moment though so much. I when know. He showed up. I'm like, oh I know. So anyway, it's just like I said. It's like this really chaotic race. I mean, it never lets up. It's one thing after another. And just when you're not sure where this whole dead body thing's gonna go, then they, she throws in like this, this heist story too. And then they have to deal with that. And it's just kinda, it's crazy. It's just crazy. It is kinda typical rom-com kinda stuff. I mean, so if you don't like rom-coms, you will not like this. Um, so yeah. At first, I was a little, so I have a sense of humor, <laughs> and it sometimes gets a little dark, and I never expected this book to real, be realistic, but even at first, it was a little icky that all of this comedy was surrounding this poor dead guy, and it was I mean, like, I kind of like that part of it, though. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, because it's very it's weak like, burns. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it turned out that the guy wasn't a very good guy anyway. Well, I so know, I mean, but still, they kept using that as a justification, though. And it was like, uh, but then it was like, you know, after a while, it was like, eh. Because there was a, a fair amount of time when they were basically just hiding the body. They weren't, like, actively doing something with it. Mm -hmm. So... I mean, it was all good. I, like I said, I never expected it to be realistic. The other thing, I gave it four stars, by the way. I don't know if I said that already. But another thing that kind of dropped it for me is Nathan. There was, like, no nuance to his character at all. At all. Um, even when there was, in the beginning of the book, there was several flashbacks to, um, to their college days when they were a couple. And even then, 
it was just Nathan was never fleshed out at no. all. I mean, he was just there for for there to be that for there romance. to be that little that little romance. And how they broke up. Come on. That was dumb. It was so dumb. And it's like if Nathan loved her the way he said he did, there's no way he would have left that easy. Thank you. Thank no you. way. That was like my one thing. I agree with you. Because the whole reason that I gave it four stars was because of the Nathan character. Mm -hmm. Because it was just like, this makes absolutely no sense. Like why this is yeah. kind of played out this way. And then the fact that when they met up again, <clears throat> excuse me, he had like no animosity towards her at all. No, and I feel like <clears throat> I probably would have a little bit after yeah. the way things went down. And yeah. she just pretty much was just like, you're not going to know, bye. You yeah, know? I mean, like, she broke up with him and basically sent him packing. And he was like, when they met up again, he was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe so it's happy. so good to see you. And like, yeah. she, like he literally just came up to her and practically hugged her. And I'm like, bro, if I saw my ex who had done that to me, I would have just been like stock still and might have just turned and walked the other way. You yeah. know, like, yeah, I don't know. So, you know, like I said, it's only like 300 pages. So another 50 pages worth of developing Nathan's character and giving them a little depth to their relationship would have been a good thing. Yeah. But, but anyway. Maybe he gets more developed in the sequel. Well, maybe so. But anyway, I, yeah, there was that. Um, <clears throat> and there was one more thing. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> there was one more thing, but now I can't think of it. Um, but I think just overall, it was a lot of fun. It's nothing serious. It's nothing deep. You can read it easily. It's a definitely an airplane read, beach yeah. read. You know, it's so fun. I laughed out loud a couple times because especially the culture clashes, um, because she does in the beginning as an introduction. Um, she talks about her, her nationality and her background and how, um, you know, her, the older relatives, they grew up speaking Indonesian and uh, Cantonese or Chinese or what have you. Um, and a lot of times the younger generation didn't and they learned English as their first language. So the older generation would speak broken English, but they're obviously fluent in their first languages. Whereas the younger generation is fluent in English, but speaks very broken Cantonese or Mandarin or whatever it is. And so it leads to a lot of miscommunications, you know, to where even like parents and children can't fully communicate mm -hmm. very well. Um, and it does. I mean, the whole scenario about how her blind date came about. Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh I my laughed God. so hard at that. I'm like, that no. was so hilarious. And so I think it's kind of important to, to say like, you know, that she's, she's aware that a lot of the characterization of the aunties can be viewed as stereotypical but that it is authentic you know this is the way it happens because of that language barrier she puts like said in her beginning author's note when she's talking about it could be viewed as stereotypical or stereotyping the asian community um it says their grasp of the english language is not a reflection of their intelligence but a reflection of the sacrifice that they've made for us just meaning that the, the things that they sacrificed in order that their children could go to these English-speaking boarding schools or that they immigrated and their children, you know, grew up in America speaking English. So that, you know, she wanted to make that very clear. And I think that's a good thing because it could be viewed as, right. as very much, but I, it was funny though. <laughs> it really was the eggplant. <laughs> Everybody texts. You, all, you, her older aunties and everybody, they all text. And her aunties are trying to use emojis. <laughs> Definitely gave it's, her blind date the yeah. wrong impression. But even later on, when Medi's trying, Medi's in a different place trying to take wedding photographs because they're still doing their job. And she's texting the, her oldest aunt, 
called her Big Auntie. And she's trying to text, and her auntie just sends back a string of emojis, and she's like, that makes no sense. <laughs> what do what she's trying to say? Yeah, and then later her aunt, her uh, big auntie tells her what it was, what yeah. it's supposed to be. She's just like, that's not <laughs> what that means. <laughs> oh, it was great. But I think, too, it, it's kind of fun, because being of an older generation myself, my children will text me and I have no clue what they're trying to say to me. No clue. And I'll just have to text back, translation please, you know, because I don't know. So it's kind of relatable in that way too because I can see myself doing that to my children. <laughs> I, there's more than once that my sons have, have texted me back going, Mom, don't say that. That's not what you think it means. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I, you know, I get that. And that's probably why it was a little bit funny to me too. But, but anyway, like I said, it's real light. There's a few plot holes um, in it, but you know, nothing glaring. I mean, it just, even if it was, the whole stinking thing is so unrealistic that, yeah. you know, it doesn't. But it is funny and it's cute and it is heartwarming. I mean, her relationship with her family and really the way that Medi starts out feeling like, you know, she had always been somewhat held back by her family because with their culture within their family, you know, you respect your elders. And so she being the youngest, of course, of the group was always doing what she was told and, you know, you don't question anybody. and. She was never really wanted to be the wedding photographer in this business, but how do you say no? And and so a lot of it too was kind of Medi coming into her own, mm -hmm. um, kind of taking charge from her aunties at times, and you know in the end really coming clean with them. And I love love the scene where she talks to her mom about you know why she didn't tell her mom about Nathan. Yeah. And her mom was like, I know. Mm -hmm. And it's like. Oh, Cool mom moment, cool mom. So it, there really was just really sweet in places too. So yeah, I really, I really liked it. And I will read the next one. Yeah. And you know, there's a third being planned too. Mm -hmm. So very excited. I will read it. It's definitely one of those things that when you need something light, yeah, and just to make you laugh mm -hmm. and a short, quick, quick read. Yeah. That yeah. Yep, I am too. Success! Woo! We had finally a very successful couple of blind dates. We did. We did. <laughs> that was a good deal. Well, if you guys enjoyed listening to us talk about our blind dates of the book, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And also, if you're not already subscribed, go on down below the video and hit that red subscribe button. Join the Everyday Adventure family and watch us do our book videos every Sunday. Yes. Yes. And, um, again, on her channel. There's plenty more book content if you would like to see that. I'm really trying hard not to say stuff all the time, um, but you can go see that. If that's really not your thing or if you're just interested in other things, then she's got... Now look, I'm going to replace it with things. <laughs> There's all kinds of other topics um, as well. She has um, shopping hauls and fashion and home decor and deep cleaning her whole house. Um, and you know, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> yeah. And the kitties, and, of course. Yes, and um, now that 4th of July is officially over, it's Halloween season, baby. So oh, all of the Halloween content go. is coming out. Be here ready for those decor hauls, even though I shouldn't, but I and know I shopping. Will. You know the shopping will be coming too, because I don't know, 25 tubs of Halloween decorations are just not enough. They're really not. It's not. It's not. It's not. I saw on Facebook that you already said you've already been shopping. I saw it. I see things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have so far only bought one official Halloween decoration this year. So far. So far. And it is the cutest little thing that you ever have seen. I and I love it. I have no doubt. And I have no doubt we'll see all kinds of new things. Cutest things ever in future videos. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> there's all of that. And if that's not enough for you, she also has a blog, which Hazeven has more content on it, like Foodie Fridays and Watch It Wednesdays 
and I don't know what else you got on there. Travel articles. Oh yeah, travel. I forgot the travel. Heck yeah. yeah. There's things, things and stuff. Things and stuff and content, you know. <laughs> There's anyway. a little bit of something for everybody. Yeah, anyway, you can find all of that and more, and I'm sure it will be linked down below. Well, like I said, hope you guys enjoyed watching this video, and we will... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this is our whole ending spiel. Put it down! Finger gun! <laughs> put them up, put them up. watching this video and I'm Amy and I'm Kelly and we are the, the everyday, everyday epic. epic we'll see y'all in the next one bye <laughs>